Before I begin my homily, I want to inform you that tomorrow I will not be presiding at the Mass because I will be attending a meeting with fellow bishops in the metropolitan province of Manila. You know, more and more I am inclined to think that the Eucharist is not just a memorial meal meant to commemorate the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. It was not only the Passover meal that Jesus celebrated with his disciples in that upper room in Jerusalem on that Holy Thursday evening on the night that he was betrayed. I think rather that Eucharist was every time that Jesus brought people to eat together and made them experience what I would call a kingdom of God meal. And two of these are, well, known as the stories of the feeding of the multitude. In Matthew chapter 14, we have the first feeding where five loaves and two fish are stretched to satisfy 5,000 people, leaving 12 baskets of leftovers in the end. And in today's gospel, Matthew chapter 15, we have a second feeding story where seven loaves and some fish are stretched again to feed 4,000 people, leaving seven baskets of leftovers in the end. Our gospel today is every bit Eucharistic. It is describing Jesus doing exactly as he did in the upper room on that night of his last supper. Listen to the sequence of verbs. He took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it for distribution. And now in the story, which is set on that grassy hill overlooking the lake after three days of healing session, he concluded the three days with a meal. A meal that completed their kingdom of God or kingdom banquet experience. You know, I think Jesus did this too in the house of Zacchaeus in the company of tax collectors and sinners. And I wouldn't be surprised that he did it very often in the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. He also did it at the wedding feast at Cana. He did it also with Peter and his fishermen companions at the lake of Tiberias. We hear both of this, by the way, in the fourth gospel, the gospel of John. And St. Luke is also telling us Jesus did it at Emmaus with two runaway disciples. In short, maraming beses niyang ginawa. He did it during many instances that he sat at table with his friends. He turned every meal into a kingdom of God experience that Isaiah is proclaiming in our first reading today. Sabi ni Prophet Isaiah, it is the meal that destroys the veil, destroys the veil of sorrow that covers the faces of peoples. It is the meal that wipes away their tears. The meal that destroys death. The meal that makes people experience God's kingdom. And in today's gospel, the meal that is able to stretch a little food to satisfy a lot of people. Parabang, the more you take and bless and break and give away, the more it multiplies. Ah, yan ang kingdom of God meal experience. The leftovers are always more than what they started with, like 12 
baskets of leftover from five loaves of bread or seven baskets of leftover from seven loaves of bread. Well, kahit parehong seven, mas marami naman yung basket, di ba? Jesus did not just proclaim the kingdom of God. He made the kingdom of God come. He made the future break into the present. He celebrated the presence of God's kingdom in the here and now. And always through a meal. Kainan. It was what people saw with their own eyes. At each time he broke the bread with the crippled, with the blind, the deaf, the mute. At each time he ate with the sinners and made them experience the forgiveness of God. At each time he ate with sick people and made them experience the healing from God. It never seems to be enough for Jesus to warm people's hearts with God's word as he did with those disciples who were on the way to Emmaus. Diba sabi nila, were not our hearts burning within us as he explained the scriptures to us? Hindi natapos dun. It was not enough for him to heal the sick or to forgive their sins or to deliver them from the bondage of the devil. He never seemed to be fully satisfied until he was able to break bread with them. Para bang hindi complete yung mission niya until he has literally partaken some food with people. And it meant so much for Jesus. Yung counting loaves of bread and fish, you know, they're not different from that last cup of flour of the widow of Sarepat. You remember that story? Gutom si Prophet Elijah, humihingi ng pagkain dun sa balo. And she had only one cup of flour left. What did she do? She baked it into bread and she broke bread with the Prophet. And look what happened afterwards. The jar of flour never went empty nor did the jug of oil run dry. Jesus seems quite used to doing what the poor usually do in the Philippines when they have nothing left but a cup of rice. Tandang-tanda ako yan. I was still a seminarian nung narinig ko sa isang pamilya pag wala na silang natitira, kundi isang basong bigas, hindi na nila isasaing. What do they do? Ilulugaw na lang nila. Bakit? Para mas maraming kakain. They stretch it by adding more water and salt into it so that it becomes porridge if only to be able to feed more people. People know what stretching the rice into lugaw means. It means generosity in poverty. It means multiplying the little that we have so that more people can partake of it. And what it multiplies is goodwill, care, compassion, love. Yes, radical love. It raises our humanity, however broken it is. It has the power to make miracles. It can make the crippled dance. It can make the mute sing, the blind watch, the deaf enjoy music. Does that sound familiar to you? Oo naman. You all know the Tagalog song that is set in a mythical town called San Roque. Doon po sa amin, 
bayan ng San Roque, may nagkatuwa ang apat na pulubi. Abay nagsayaw ang pilay, umawit ang pipi, nanood ang bulag at nakinig ang bingi. What is it describing? A kingdom of God experience. And today, Jesus gives us a tip how to make the kingdom come. When you can stretch whatever little you have in order to share it. All that it takes is to start with what is there and not to look for what is not there, to be grateful for it and to be ready to stretch it, to break it. In the Filipino experience, like I said, kung di mo maisaing ang kanin, eh di ilugaw, mas maraming kakain. Jesus did this too. When he added water to the wine that had run short at Cana. And remember what they said after he gave it away to be tasted by the head waiter? Sabi ba naman niya, My God, ito na yata yung pinakamasarap na wine that I have ever tasted. Malay-malay nilang dinagdagan ng tubig ni Jesus. The food of the kingdom is like that. The more you break and share it, the more it multiplies. The more water you add on the wine, the more tasty it becomes. The more you stretch your little resources with kindness and generosity, the more it multiplies.